The company Fur Friends is one thing that we know mainly about is their actual diffuser. But have we actually considered about the ARs? The company actually started off in 1998 by two twin brothers known as Ferdinand and Francis Sai. And one thing that we know about them is the fact that they are actually made their ARs in Montclair, California. But as well as that is known internationally here in the United States and as well to that to the homeland for the military's actual rifle, the Philippines. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to another episode on Airsoft Master and today we're going to be talking about is the Fur France Airsoft lineup. Mainly the fact that we have in front of me is the CQB line and as well to that my IAR setup as well. Now let's go ahead and actually work our way from the front and the way to the back of the rifle starting off with of course as your barrels. Now if you notice on the outer barrels on between these guys you're going to have is a 14mm clown clockwise thread of course and the federally mandated orange tip. But the best part is is that the fact that you want to put like a tracer unit like we did which is mainly the Fur France actual diffuser tracer unit you're able to since this is 14mm clockwise threading and it's good to go and of course it's the metal outer barrel as well. Other than that another key feature that I do like in the front end of it is the fact that you have is a nice long picatinny all the way through on the 12 o'clock positions and as well to that you have is your three six nine and of course your one and two slots for the m lock rail system which is really nice and lightweight speaking of which about that rail is the fact that this rail is very sturdy and really durable itself enough to take a beating from basically the wall your actual using it for posting up on the wall itself and to in other windows the fact that you're also takes a beating to heck anything from dry wood the actual drywall itself and in fact hey in real terms a belt and a slipper my filipino group will actually get what i mean by that now where we talked about the rail let's go ahead and talk about the trade marks and what we've seen actually on the receiver itself now for one thing that we know for for france is they try to simulate their actual real steel rifles by trying to have that same weight how would they do that is basically they would put the steel weight system in the back of the buffer tube to help balance it out making more of that realistic simulation of a real firearm for training purposes but i digress we'll talk about that later on when we get to the stock for now on the receiver one thing is the positive the fact that you will have is a full metal receiver for lower and the upper end and as well as that the best part about the actual ar control is the fact that you have your same set controls that you would have on the left hand side safe semi full auto and of course a functioning bolt catch to help reveal the actual hop-up chamber and of course that would actually push back like a functioning bolt catch to make sure that you actually recess the bolt forward to clear it up and cover up the actual hop up. Now that we already talked about the actual receiver, let's go into more in depth of the pistol grip itself. Now for some of you, this should be very familiar in regards of the actual style itself. Now one thing that we do know is I'm basically a fan of this style because of the fact that you have the extended beaver tail in the back end to help actually support your actual wrist into control. And of course this very textured design on the end of it on the actual left and right hand side of it we're making it help control and basically help manipulate to yourself to make it more stable when you actually aim down sight as well to that what's also nice about the pistol grip that helps out is the fact that compared to others where it would be screwed on to actually hold the motor plate this one has a quick hinge system so basically if you need to actually change out your motor or check your actual connections inside you're able to do so by checking it out and then once you have to put it back in just push back the hinge back in and you're good to go Again, nice little key features that you'll see from the Fur France Airsoft Company itself. Now that we've already talked about the receiver, let's go ahead and talk about the actual internals itself. Now for one thing that we're going to notice in the actual Fur France that pulls this airsoft gun is basically you have as a typical version 2 ENC gearbox shell. The benefit of the ENC is it's still a quick change spring guide system itself to a certain aspect. What I mean by that is the typical modern type of spring guides you'll see is the easy change out by actually swapping out the actual spring by removing the buffer tube from a screw or unscrewing the buffer tube itself getting to the spring guide and then changing out the spring from there now for the enc it's more relatable to the avalon series or the eight typical aps airsoft guns where you have to disassemble the gun completely to actually change out the spring to make it more indoor or outdoor friendly now what actually goes inside of it is more of the interesting parts that we've seen from ENC is of course you're going to have is your typical 18 to 1 gear set itself, a typical polymer piston and piston body itself in the main head of it, and as well as that your cylinder body is going to be a type 0 brass cylinder body. And of course what pulls the gear set itself is you're going to have your typical 18,000k motor inside the grip itself. Now in regards of your fur fans for the buffer tube system, a good news is the fact that you have a nice number indicator system to help adjust the proper length to yourself, the actual buffer tube and stock adjustment. 
As well to that, the battery space, there's a slight drawback in regards of it because of the fact that the weight system is actually inside the buffer tube. You're not gonna be able to use the buffer tube middle for your actual storage of the batteries, but you do have the actual typical ends of the other side of the actual end of the soft mod stock to help put either a typical butterfly or even a small buffer tube type actual ones of batteries of LiPo itself, which is actually wired in by Tamiya. Now let's all go ahead and talk about the actual operation of the hop-up system itself. And of course, again, when I talked about the actual receiver, what's nice is you're able to actually lock back your bolt and actually to able to adjust your hop-up system itself. Now you do have as a typical rotary style hop-up inside as well to so that the adjustment is as simple as basically down is to actually decrease the hop-up and up is to increase the hop-up for actual backspin of whatever weight BBs you use. And the best part is while we talk about the hop-up chamber, let's talk about magazine compatibility. And one thing that we know for sure with a Fur Francis is actually compatible for the typical EPM magazines from PTS, such as the EPM-1 and the regular EPM magazines. Another mid cap that we also seen that we actually house here is the Specna Arms mid cap magazines and these actually still feed these still pretty good on that aspect as well. I'm using 0.20 gram BBs and 11.1 .1 LiPo battery. Now for the Fur Friends IAR. So while we chrono both of these rifles on average from the CQB to the IR, we looked at the average around being around the low 350s to the high 370s. So in regards to the chrono FPS we're looking at from our local fields like indoors, it's a little bit still pretty high in that aspect. So what I would say is if you want to change it for indoor CQB friendly fields, you're definitely going to have to swap out the spring that's inside the gearbox. And so hopefully that you know a local tech that can actually disassemble the gun to get to the gearbox and swap out the spring in my suggestion. What basically comes with the rifle itself when you actually purchase one of the fur friends? Well, surprisingly enough, it's very simple. Of course, the fact that the, cup, the gun itself is gonna be actually encased in a nice little foam to protect it from when you're actually transporting it. But other than that, it's as simple as basically as your magazine itself, which is a high cap mag, and the gun itself. Now, surprisingly, if you have, um, it doesn't come with an actual instruction manual itself, but if you have any questions that, don't be afraid to actually message us at airsoftmaster.com and we can answer any questions that you guys have in regards of maintenance or typical actual disassembly, just in case if you actually want to upgrade it and have any questions about that, don't be afraid to shoot us an actual message from there. So what are my overall thoughts on the actual Fur France Airsoft gun? Well, for mainly the fact that I do like is how very well built this is and very more tanky feeling you'll see on this actual airsoft gun itself. The fact that the weight system makes it a nice heavier aspect and as well will actually appreciate your other airsoft guns that you have out there because it's a lot more lighter compared to these two guys. Now in the rail itself I do like this because it's a different aspect and take of a more modern style and for some reason kind of goes very well with the Fur France diffuser system that you'll see in the front like we did with this actual CQBR. Now, a couple key points I would have to say in regards to the actual advisement that I need to say is the fact that the LiPo batteries is not going to be able to fit in the buffer tube because of the fact that that's where the weighted system is at. But you still have the stock in to actually put, like I said, is a typical butterfly or 11.1 .1 LiPo buffer tubes inside the actual stock and just a little bit different on there. But other than that, again, it's a pretty nice rifle and something a lot more different. But what do you guys think about the Fur France rifle? If you want to get these, you can always check it out at airsoftmaster.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the actual channel and comment on what you guys want to do with these kind of builds. But other than that, for this episode, my name is Mike. I'll see you guys in the next time. This video is brought to you by Airsoft Master.